the workflow on is gonna be first. And I was thinking about it because sometimes these um, like work periods, for some people they're super productive, but if you don't have a good handle on what to do next at any given point in a project, sometimes the work period is like the worst thing in the world because you haven't had adequate time to kind of think through where you should be next. And it totally depends. But like I know for me, like work periods were usually super unproductive unless, no, they're, they were super unproductive. They're only productive for me now as an adult because I have like a plan all the time, at like any given time of like, oh, I have a free hour, I could do this. So um, I wanna kind of introduce a really simple way of kind of keeping track of things that I think also will help with creativity. I kind of think that the more, not necessarily the more organized you are, but the more you have a handle on what the steps are in a project, and the more you then work with your own sort of instincts and work styles, the, the more creative you can be. Because you're sort of working with reality, but you also have a handle on what it takes to get things done. So if you only work with your working style and it's all chaos, that can be great until other people are dependent on you, and then that can be a total disaster. Um, but just as bad as if your work style is all chaos and then you just try to stay organized and then you're like the lunatic who is constantly making to-do lists that they never use or like always cleaning their desk. Like if you don't work because you're constantly cleaning your desk, the solution is not to clean your desk, is to work somewhere else and just let your desk be a mess and go work at the kitchen table or somewhere else. Maybe. But Getting Things Done is this great book by this guy, David Allen. Uh, and people who nerd out on it call it GTD. But it, there's one really valuable idea in it, which is about the idea of process. So a really typical thing that people will do is like they'll have a to-do list, and the to-do list has really big amorphous things on it. So the to-do list will say something like, design, design poster for client, which like, could potentially be that simple, but depending on where you are in the process, design poster for client could actually entail the research, the sketching, like the ideation, getting paper samples, um, calling printers. Like it, it could typically involve a lot of stuff. Very often when we say it's like, oh, I need to design this, we don't actually mean, I have an idea, I need to sit down at my computer and actually make the thing. We mean, I have all of these interrelated activities and, uh, and I need to do one or more of them. And if anything, summing it up is just like, oh, design poster is really dangerous because in your mind you're thinking, oh yeah, I gotta design that poster. And then you sit down to do it and you discover, like you sit down at 11 o'clock at night to do it and then you realize like, oh shit, I need to go to the library. I can't go to the library because like design poster was inaccurate. What it should have said was design poster as like a subject and then a list of activities that that might entail. And this can seem really nerdy or unnecessary, but the thing to sort of think about is if you don't have a handle on what the activities are to do a project, you cannot estimate it. And if you can't estimate it, you're gonna go broke. Like this is like probably one of the biggest downfalls of small studios or like that thing where um, where someone is like, it's awesome, I get to be my own boss, but my boss is an asshole. Cause like your boss, your boss, you doesn't know how to estimate projects, doesn't, hasn't fully articulated what's involved. So you get a project and you sort of go like gut instinct, oh, that'll be $3,000 but you didn't really look at the process of what it takes you to do it. And if you had, you would have been like, that's a $7,000 project. And it's gonna take the time of one and I can't do other work during that time. And like, this is like a, such an easy way to go broke as like an artist or designer is like not to actually know how long things take. First, you have to kind of capture that information and figure it out. But something is better than nothing, right? Some, ac some estimate of what to do is gonna be better than no estimate. So you start out with like, okay, design poster. What does that actually entail? You know, like one, there's the specs. Like, do you even know the specs? Like, has anyone ever started a project where you actually kind of don't know anything about it? 
So like, it could be as simple as like, you need to get the specs. If you don't have them, your actual step of design poster is email client with a list of questions. Now, why is that important? Because if you don't do that, if you do the, the thing of, well, I still need to be productive though. So it's 11.30 at night, you can't get this information, you've promised some deliverable. And you're like, well, this is when I'm gonna work on it, so I'm just gonna do it. But you don't actually have any information. That's one of the easiest ways to get creative block. If you imagine creative block, like any creative project is a timeline, like there's a start, and then there's a finish, and then you've got these different timelines in here. So like the start should be like a kickoff or a brief, and then there's like research and sketching and maybe a presentation and so on and so forth. So you kind of naturally end up at the end. One of the really easy ways to get creative block and to kind of screw around is to have not gone through the steps, but force yourself to try to do one. So like I think a really common way to get creative block is like you haven't done any research and then you decide you're gonna design the one masterpiece right now. Like you're gonna do that one version. And so you're at the, you think that you're at this point in the process. You're working as though you are, but you're missing all this context and information and research to doing the work. And in my experience, like one, that can lead to creator block, but two, it can lead to that sense of like self-doubt about is this the right solution? Is this the right idea? Because it's one thing to have done all of this and then just be like, screw it, I'm just gonna bang out one version, I'm just gonna show them one instead of doing like three or four options. But if you don't have any of that, there's no depth to the decisions that you're making. You're just kind of like throwing something together. Like that whole thing where people say like, oh, designers should have self-doubt or whatever, that is not true. Like if you have self-doubt, assume it's a symptom of another problem. It's either a symptom of like bad process, like you don't have conviction in your work because you haven't done the work to earn the conviction, or you have a self-confidence problem. So like the whole notion like, oh, self-doubt is really important and if, if you're unsure of the work, that's like, that means you're doing a good job. That, that is terrible, terrible advice. Like take it, that kind of thing, that pain, and assume it's telling you something useful. If you have self-doubt about the work, you either need to get confidence, that could be one issue, or you need to fix your process so that when you get to this point, you're sure of what you're doing. You're like, you know that you're on the right path because you've done the necessary work. So specs is like a super simple one. Then you might have, okay, well I gotta do like the research. I think, at least in the very beginning of planning out a project, it's smart to define what the research will be. And is it go to the library? Or is it read whatever, some blog or something? Go to the library is like not helpful information to have in the middle of the night, but read the blog is. So if you start doing that, then you can start making like more informed decisions about like, oh, if I can like get out of work a little bit early, like cut my lunch break short, I can dip by the library and go to this section. And now you have like a concrete idea of things that you need to do. You're actually turning like a, some of the creative steps into errands, which is like a great thing because like now they're not distracting you. And then you get into whatever your next steps are. Maybe for you it's sketching. I'm not sure if these will show it, but like, I will break down initially in a project, like what is, what, how am I defining sketching? And it might be sketch out three versions of this spread. So there's like a magazine up there. There was like a section that was different than the rest and it was like develop, like sketch out three ideas for that spread. Not design the spread, not sketch the spread, because even sketch the spread doesn't define like the deliverable. I still have room to change my mind, right? Like I could do the one sketch and be like, oh shit, that's awesome, I'm done. But it's helpful to actually have initially thought of it in terms of what's worst case scenario, I probably need to do a few of them. Then I can accurately figure out the time. And then there's this nice thing, which is that maybe your research takes too long, but you've like zipped through the sketching and you're kind of like you're still tracking where you should be. It doesn't mean that you don't sometimes go over. It doesn't mean that you're not wrong. It doesn't mean there's not human error, but it means that in the best sort of situation, you have an understanding of what it takes to do things. So you like sketch and you're like, okay, I'm gonna do three versions on paper. And that could lead into, and you can think about this stuff up front, I think sometimes it's smart too. Who here has like been responsible for dealing with printing? 
So did you ever actually account for how long it would take the printer? And did you like account for like the press checks? No one ever does this. Like no one ever goes, oh man, it's gonna take half a day. Like I'm gonna lose half a day of doing other work to just make sure this thing prints correctly. If you're going through with design poster and you're just making a list, it's very easy to be like, okay, I gotta think about the printing. Do I know when this thing has to be in mailboxes? Like specs part two, basically. If I know when it needs to print, like when does it need to go there? Like if you actually think about this up front, it's gonna affect this, right? Now you can go psycho on this and over nerd out on it, or you can do it really simple, which is kind of big buckets, like eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper and go, okay, what does it take to come up with a concept? What will it take to design it? And what will it take to produce it? Whatever that means. One project that can be really helpful one of the reasons it's good is because when you're like not in the creative mood, you're not trying to figure out what the hell does design poster mean. You're thinking, I don't feel like doing this. Like I don't have the brain power for this, but if I go over to my printing list, well, I could probably look at paper samples or I can go through my, does everyone have like a big bin of printed samples yet? Yeah, you want to get like those like nice big office bins from um, Office Depot or someplace like that? put some hanging folders in them and start filling it up with posters and stuff. If I'm tired, well, I can look at that and it's productive, but it's not as taxing as maybe this might be. Or I can be lazy and be like, I'll set up the deck first because like that's low hanging fruit. And so if I come into class in a work period and I just like, dude, I don't want to be creative right now. There's a bunch of that I can do. And I've already thought about it when I was kind of in productive gear. Actually, maybe I'll show one from today, because I tend to like keep these kind of obsessively, so I use Basecamp. So some proofs came in today for this magazine project. So it says like GLS proofs. Now, the proofs are sitting at my desk. I know what to do with the proofs in general. Review proofs and check the sizes and weights. Then have Brie review the proofs. Return to Heather, that's in the wrong order. Then have Bone review the proofs and then return them to Heather. Now. At some point, I'm gonna put the proofs away. It's really good to have a list tomorrow when I come in to be like, oh man, I gotta review those proofs. Cause there's a million things going on. It'd be very easy to forget about it. And I think writing down really obvious things, so like in GTD, he calls it next actions. That like you always kind of know, once I've done this, this thing follows it. One of the reasons it's really handy is, um, uh, I don't know how many people remember this, but that the Black Lives Matter activist, Sean King, he had this issue like, a few months ago, a plagiarism issue. So he was accused of plagiarizing maybe two to three whole paragraphs of his column in the New York Observer or whatever it is he writes for. And he immediately like when saw him tweeted out and he was like, nope, that stuff was attributed for, it was in quotes, like here's a screen grab of the Word document. So then his editor had to say, I was not trying to get Sean fired, I made a mistake. And he ended up resigning, he wrote this article and here's what happened. He had Sean's column, he was formatting and dealing with it. Someone came up to him and interrupted him. He didn't stop and track what the next thing he needed to do with that was. But he could have done something as simple as write on a post-it, finish, for, finish the formatting or finish the attribution or whatever and put that on his monitor. Instead, he went and helped these other people for like 45 minutes, came back, he looked at the thing, I was like, oh sweet, it's done and then sent it out. So like, here's this person with three kids who's like thrown in the middle of a scandal, is forced to resign over a kind of like a dumb mistake, brings unnecessary heat down on Sean King, a, people, a person who a lot of people want there to be heat on. Like he basically created more drama for this dude who has no problem getting drama on his own. He doesn't need like it's the people he works for causing more, right? But like all he had to do was just somewhere be capturing like what's the next step. And then when he would have sat back down, it would have been really easy to get back into the flow. And if you think about like, maybe in schoolwork that's not super important, but like once you have client projects, someone will say something super obvious in a meeting about a piece of design. And it's like, you look at it and you're like, oh yeah, totally, that's, that change is obvious. And you don't even write it down because you assume it's so obvious you don't need to write it down. And then sure enough, two or three days later when you're finally working on it, you get to that page and you're like, I remember something.
about this page. You can't remember what's wrong with it because you like didn't capture it or didn't have a trigger. Because like sometimes you have a pristine deck and there's just one note somewhere and you look at the deck and you're like, oh, there's no notes on that. And you toss it to the side and then you're the jackass that didn't update the super critical thing. Like maybe you misspelled the client's name or whatever on the, the deck. So like having a system for capturing that stuff and then also an awareness of where you are in a project, between the two of those, you're kind of bulletproof. On the one hand, you're less likely to make really stupid mistakes. On the other hand, you have these sort of backups for when you are kind of confused or mixed up. And I would, uh, it's one of those things, it's like how if you like always have a pen in your pocket, people think you're prepared. If people walk over to your computer, like even if you have a to-do list at your desk, they're like, you're organized. And you're like, no, I'm not. You know, like, <laughs> that's why I have the to-do list. Figure out some way of doing it where it works with you. So it could be as simple as like a note on your computer that just tells you what you need to do the next day. It could be like index cards in your pocket where you just like remember to capture stuff. Or it could be like literally like you just have a folder, a manila folder with sheets of paper in it and each phase of the project is on a sheet of paper. It's like, it's less about of best practices and more about just starting to understand what the steps are that are involved in any given project. The more you can do that, the more predictable in a good way creative work is. You don't want the actual creative part to be predictable other than that it sh you should predictably come up with awesome stuff, but you want the context around it to be predictable enough that you understand, okay, like here's the boring stuff I have to do, here's where the exciting part happens, here's that other boring stuff that I never give enough time to. Uh, no one ever thinks about how long it will take them to like get a file ready to print. Like it takes a day, it always takes a day and you're like, ah, it's just a poster, it'll be super easy. Or if it's like a screen print, it takes a day and a half just to get the stupid file ready for you to go bring it to Kinko's to get your stupid transparencies or whatever. And then you're like, I forgot to, about the fact that I have to go to Kinko's, you know, the U of M to do this. I'm like, when can I do that? It's gonna be crazy busy. So you start to capture that stuff, your work is gonna be more predictable in a good way. Uh, and that will free you up for the parts that are actually creative to have more control out, out of them and for them to be um, more productive. And it's like, you know, some days you just get like, today I was like exhausted at 3.30 but we had kicked off a new project and I had enough of it listed out that I could be like, oh, I could do this. This is so mindless. I only have to do set up an InDesign file. And then it's like, once I've done that, I was like, oh, I could do the next thing because that's also mindless. And it's like, there's a lot of dumb little stuff that you can sort of, you can leverage yourself to do um, that can make you more productive, even though the stuff is boring, but like the boring stuff is always great when you're tired, right? Like I don't like doing the creative stuff when I'm tired. I want to like zone out and do something stupid when I'm tired. Yeah, I would recommend like even at this phase of like tracking your projects, even if it's like like a notes, like just use the notes app on your um, laptop and just like 9.15 to 9.45, I did this activity. Do it without any judgment. Like you don't want to force yourself to be like, Oh, I only spent this long doing that. that. That should have taken longer, but it can be really helpful to understand like how long things actually take you and where you're losing lots of time. Because assume that however you're working now, if you don't actively mold it and shape it so that it works for you, you're gonna work the same way later. And the next action thing is really good when you're managing a lot of stuff. Because like, you know, some of your projects are going to be at like creative stage and some are going to be at like kind of admin stage. And if you can just sort of zip through and be like, the next phase of this is this, cool, I'm going to do that and bang it out. And like, next phase of this is this, cool, I'm going to do that. And it's like, this kind of thing kind of does that for me. It's like, there's some creative stuff, there's some stupid stuff, there's some easy stuff, and I can just kind of go through and keep pushing everything forward.